Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Today is a very, very special game. It is an absolutely phenomenal title that I would totally recommend to RPG lovers. This game lands itself easily in my top 5 RPG games of all time. Disco Elysium is a groundbreaking role-playing game. You're a detective with a unique skill system at your disposal and a whole city block to carve your path across. Interrogate unforgettable characters, track murders, or take bribes. Become a hero or an absolute disaster of a human being. I'm going to give you guys a very, very brief introduction to the beginning of the game. You start off as a detective who has lost your memory in the most terribly timed amnesia. And in this amnesia, you have no idea what your name is, what your occupation is. You have no idea that you're even a detective. But worst of all, as you uncover more and more clues about yourself, you begin to not want to know your past. You're not sure if discovering your past is actually a good idea at all. I was intrigued by this game because the graphics really do look awesome. But more than that, the graphics really show the kind of game that I thought I'd be interested in. I love RPG games. I love games where choices matter. And I love that this game has a skill system where you get to level up the points into becoming the person you want to be. There are so many choices in this game and I feel like it's a pretty mature themed game. And now for the very first time, maybe for some of you guys, let's dive into the game together. Let's enjoy a game of Disco Elysium. So when I first played this game, I thought it was actually called Disco Asylum, which made it even creepier sounding, which I love. Okay, so wait, that was a new game, right? Okay, we're gonna click new game. And we can either choose to be a thinker with five intellectual, one physical, don't know i don't remember what this is extremely intelligent very bad with people knows interesting facts comes up with original ideas or sensitive very psychological a magnetic personality but absolutely unstable might begin to lose his mind and trust me guys these things do matter or physical extremely physical interacts with the world through his body gets things done but dumb as a rock wow but I feel like this is the kind of guy who's going to beat through people to get his answers. And this one is just very emotionally intellectual. And this guy is just overall like an Einstein type of thinker. Very, very smart. But we are going to create our own actually. I want to do that. Let's have fun with that. So intellectual four is good. Three is average. I want to be intellectual. Sensitivity. How emotionally intelligent you are. Oh, that's psyche. Broad brain power, your musculature, how strong you are. You don't need to be very strong, but I like being very emotional and intelligent. Oh, three is weak. Motorist, your senses, how agile you are. I'm not very agile, but I'm very, I like being emotionally intelligent. But I feel like being agile will be good for me in this game. Anyways, I think I'm going to go with this one. Good, average, average, weak. Good intellect, average, no, I actually like, I actually like uh, emotionally intelligent the most. All right, this is it. There we go. Hop into the game we shall. Ooh, select your signature skill. The skill you select will gain a plus one bonus. Additionally, the learning cap for every skill of the same type will be raised by one. Ah. If I click on it, I wonder if it'll tell me if it will tell me like more detail oh it does charm women and men play the puppet master oh that's what's suggestion connect to station 41 understand cop culture oh. intimidate the public assert your authority understand others work your mirror neurons i like empathy always punches and gut feelings dreams and waking life Ooh, that sounds cool Hold yourself together. Keep your morale up. I kind of want this one or this one. I want to understand other people. I feel like that's pretty good for being a detective. Let's do it. Confirm. Welcome to an episode and the first gameplay we're doing for Disco League. The furries are at home in the mirror. 
It is their address, even the clearest water if deep down can drown. The presentation you want to take home with you is this. You have to beat the other evil apes in the face, or you lose. Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meter around you. A sensation. Are you guys ready for one of the best RPG games of all time? Your decisions, or our decisions, from this point on will matter. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert, hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. Wow. Oh, success again. Because we were high in that point. It was a medium difficulty. It wasn't easy. It needed 10 points and we had 10. from your mouth and with it an ungodly headache a fiery streak penetrates your skull trying to force your eyes open it's a sound here we go Here we are in all of our glory. Look at the amazing graphics. Like, everything is perfectly pictured. This is us, naked, with no idea what's happening. This is our face right now, because we have no idea how we even look like. What is this? This magnum sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. Looks like we have a terrible headache. Looks like someone tore out the tape while the song was playing. Oh, tab to highlight. This reel-to-reel -reel tape player is still on rolling empty. Whoever did this must have been in a lot of pain, like to just rip it out little by little like that. And I'm guessing it's us, unless this is a mystery game as well. It most likely is. This is a very dope game, very deep. And there's so many, like, options. It's not as straightforward as one might think. Should take it. Disco, Age Blazer, and our hairy, hairy chest. I guess I can't pick up a shirt. I would like to pick up a shirt as well. We are walking infinitely. There's a tie there. And I just click the top. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Inland Empire. Ooh, success again. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures in this strange world. Oh, we only have a 42% chance of doing that. Or we can pull on the fan or pull on the light bulb. We should... I mean, should we try it? That's only 42%, so... Success! You swoop up and catch a tie snap. It's released from the blade. Warning, warning, the necktie is no longer contained. Item gained horrific necktie. What you have in your hand is a fantastically colorful tie, or four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. Don't need to, uh, on the fan right now to stop take it. Just air things out, maybe. Move our way into the bathtub. What is that? You see bottles in the bathtub. Wine, beer, and sweet liquor. I don't- Oh, there's a shirt. Take it. White stained shirt. There we go. Our top is ready. The water still. Oh. The mirror. Can we see in it? It's not.
Oh. More that we can talk. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base, and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the sofa. For whatever reason, we're in such a deep amnesia that we can't even remember our face. I am going to wipe the mirror. As you slowly reach your hand toward the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you will see there, and you will never unbecome it. I think I should still. There we go. Wow, we are all red-eyed, and we look worn out. We look tired. There's no lying about this. This photo. Behold. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Dear Lord, help me. What is this? Of course I do. It's um some kind of superstar. I think I'm a superstar. This is the face of a late stage alcoholic. We are going to admit it. Too late. You clearly have rigor mortis on your face. Or wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? I'm not making it. The face is just making itself. Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. Okay, try to stop. Oh my god, you can't stop. It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin onto your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the motion you're trying to convey? That is true. I don't know what I'm trying to do here. I'm insinuating that I'm vaguely sympathetic or superstardom. No, good god, I don't know what it is. It's inscribable. It's supposed to look suggestive. I'm afraid it's meant for the ladies. I think I'm sort of pulling it off too in a sad has-been kind of way. There is some charm to it. Or it's an expression of pain. I'm leaning towards these two. I think I'm vaguely sympathetic. I want to go there. Ooh. There might have been. Ten years ago, it's little more than a cadaverous... Cadaverous spasm now. This has a higher chance, although it's low. But we're gonna try it anyways. Ooh, it's a failure. Okay, I'm just gonna let the mirror be for now. There's no chance at this. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. That's why we're trying to make this face, I guess. If there's only... Oh, if I left-click on it, I can see what else I can do. Alright, now I have pants. Should I just turn the fan off then? Yes, so. The blades come squawking to a hole. Hold on, the light bulb. Ooh, terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. Get on. <gasps> Damage health minus one. Your eyes burn with photosensitivity. It's not. The reason I did that though is not to like cause myself more pain, but I thought that, oh, there's a thing that I can hear. Perception hearing. You hear a jingle. Keys are clanking in the pocket of your flare-cut pants. Push them out. It says, whirling in rags on the aluminum key ring. There's a single key on the ring. The number, number one, is etched on it. It should open the door. Now let's wear our shoe. Green shoe, left foot. Thing out. There's this broken glass. The window stands broken in its flame. Frame. Cold wind blow. We can assess the damage. Ooh, success. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. Did I break it with my own hands? Look at them. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. What did this then? It kind of makes me think that there's a chance that this is all staged that we got knocked out or we got framed that we're 
an alcoholic, but we're not actually. That could always happen. Or perhaps we are actually an alcoholic who threw the bottle out or something else. What did this then? More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after the impact. Assess the size of them. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations, you smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you can still find the other on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. Maybe it wasn't me. You mean someone else took off your shoe and smashed the window with it? Because this could be that kind of game. I should go and get that shoe. Five experience, that's good. A cold wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. Let's go next. I think there's anything left. Head out. Lady. There's something on the table. Change. Let's take it. Go get my shoe. This leads to the outside. Low on health, put points into endurance. Don't quite remember, but perhaps we do need to heal our health. <laughs> Smell of the sea makes you dizzy. Whirling in rags, just like our key said. That means we're staying in this place. It looks most likely like... A gust of briny wind washes. We have our shoes. Task complete. Find your other shoe. Gained experience plus 10. There they both are. Two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snake skinned. Reunited on your feet. Conceptualization success. Like two baby crocodiles. How do they fit? Good. They're balanced. Comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now. Truth be told. I'm glad our shoes are comfy. Usually snakeskin leather stuff. I don't have comfy experience. Talk to this lady. Everything in this game mattered though. The last time we played. I think I even might need to remember what the lady is wearing. I'm not sure if it goes that deep. But... <gasps> she gone. Okay. I, I remember that there was a lady here. Let me go check the date. Calendar says it's March. The year's 51. Hello, officer. Who is this? He knows what job I do. Kalashji? Miss Orangi Disco Dancer. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Officer and my military personnel. Turn your bloated face away from her beauty. Keep on walking. Uh, I don't want to walk away, I should- No. He seems perplexed by your question. There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. Wait, I know. I'm a businessman. Chief Executive Officer, right? I don't think that's the right choice, though. Although we're thinking- Although this was a successful option and we think we might be a businessman, I should ask her this. Or should I ask her this? Like, follow- successful route then why did you call me an officer is why i want no because more. you're a police officer sir he pulls on her cigarette goddamn right i'm a policeman and don't you forget it i should have asked her are you sure or you're shitting me i'm gonna ask say are you sure I am, yes unless you've been feeding us a set of very well rehearsed lies all this time Takes another drag. You've been here for three days on official police business, no less. What business is I that? I couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. Oh, everybody knows we drink a lot. Ooh, this is a suggestion, right? And it's low, but I do want to try it. 
try the expression on her. Let her know that you want her physically. Oh, whoa, whoa, oh, whoa. That wasn't... That wasn't what I was planning, but... I mean, let's try it. Okay. We only have one option, guys. <sighs> uh, she erupts in laughter, all the fatigue sweat from her face. What was that? That's not even how words are used. What did you say? Come on, say it again. Okay, that made her laugh, and laughter is like the best medicine, right? Maybe we can become friends. That's good. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. Okay. I think I would laugh really hard, too. I mean, under the right circumstance. Uh, what shall we say? I'm a cop of the apocalypse, superstar cop. I can no longer deny it. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said that. You're pretty. I'm sorry. I'm the sorry cop. I'm not sure I'm a cop at all. I sure don't remember being one. I think I might have lied. I think this one. Oh. Oh, she likes, she likes it. She appears to genuinely want you to understand it's okay. That's good. So what if you can't pull grade A? There are other things in life, more meaningful, more fitting for a man your age. This, she gestures to herself draped in silver. This is Theta Morgana. One thing though. It's going to suck for you later when you have to interrogate me. And for the record, no, I didn't do it. Uh, looks like she left a nice long stub in the ashtray. It's still sticking. Electrochemistry. You should pick that fat, juicy bug from the tray, light it up, and smoke the living hell out of it. Am I a smoker? Who knows what you are? A monster, a murderer, the gnome of Geronoma, Jeroma? You feel like a smoker, especially when you look at that juicy, succulent, productive cigarette stub, still smoldering deliciously. But well, she broke out the filter. I can't smoke that. How very astute of you. This renders it ineffectual. You should look for a whole cigarette, or better yet, an entire pack. Strike that. A whole carton. Make sure they're not all healthy. Make sure they're all healthy and able-bodied, then smoke them. The necktie seems to make your neck expand. Suddenly, the garish tie feels very snug. Oh, yikes, from a horrific necktie. Conceptualization with success. So far, we're having so much success, actually. Like a cat rubbing itself against its owner's calves. A cat that wants you to smoke a lot. Actually, I reject that idea. If I can, I'm going to reject the smoking. No offense to anyone that smokes, but personally, I don't like to, so I'm going to try to reject it in the game if I can. Because we're already drunken and we have like a big hangover. I don't want to go uh, make him addicted to another substance that we might have to spend money on. I don't think I can. It doesn't look like he can. Or you could not do that. No one is making you. I should enthusiastically do that. I should not not do that. I'll make a priority one. Well, I'll think about it. I should not. not. I'll think about it. Good. Thinking about yummy cigarettes in your mouth is the next best thing. Make sure you think about juicy sticks of tobacco all the time, though. It doesn't count if it's not. Jesus Christ, my God. When you're done thinking about them, graduate to getting them. Find smokes and smoke them. Plus, smoking gives them massive bonuses. Whoa, massive bonuses. Ah, can I reject? Whoa, are we, are we... Like, we can enter her room, but I just want to be friends, guys. This is the weekend edition of the uh, satirical newspaper, Trompe de la Monde. Nothing on the front page rings. But the thing is, I need more friendships. Like, I feel like... Knock. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on somewhere inside. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something with you. Why are you doing this? Don't do this to me. Beauty, don't abandon me all in this ugliness. Swallow the emotion. I'm so alone. Swallow the emotion. The door is closed. 
Knock again. Still no one. Knock again much harder. I don't want to just go in there. Can I just keep knocking? Okay, I guess I can. Try the handle. This door can only be opened with a key or from the inside. Ah, there we go. Here we are. Thought I had my shot, but not down so easily. Short on money, equip a plastic bag, collect bottles, and sell them at free day. Ooh, look at the grass. This. Hi. Down the stairs we come from our apartment. Or actually, it looks like a hotel. This is where the lyrics should be. Lyrics board. This is where the mic is. A big old karaoke mic just waiting for someone to sing into. Alright, this is a mirror. Are we gonna check out how it's out? The speaker is connected to the radio. The music is seasoned with static. You should totally sing karaoke here the first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know of your vast oceanic soul. My soul's cubic content is obscured by the hangover. I think so. Of course, at this point, precise measurements of your soul can only be performed from the outside and needs to be heard through a PA system. By other people. Should I sing? I mean, sure. You have not yet stumbled on right lamentation, but it's out there. It'll come to you. You'll wreak havoc with it, don't you worry. Lamentation sounds good. They'll really get a gauge on my soul with that. I was thinking maybe I could sing something happy. Get the people going. Perhaps. No, no, don't sing the happy song. It's stupid. Sing the sad song. It's profound. Okay, sing karaoke. We should find something tragic to sing first, though. Let's finish the thought. I guess we shall. This. Look at everything. Fire extinguisher. You get it, I guess? When you find things, you should take it, right? In an RPG, I feel like if you find anything, you should take it. But this is technically stealing. This is a water cooler, what? I didn't read the rest. The menu has been wiped clean. Only the word Monday is written on it. I guess today is Monday. Talk to this guy. Are you guys ready? A man in his late 20s, Garte the cafeteria manager. I love the painting. I mean, the drawing, the art style of everything. It is phenomenal. A man in his late 20s stands behind the counter inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a side sideways glance, then looks down again. That there is disdain in his eyes. Even now he's purposefully ignoring you. Don't think we should start the conversation with something tells me you don't like me. Look at the stuffed bird. A competent work of taxidermy, the white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. I actually didn't know about taxidermy until I watched this TV show called The Bates Motel, which I absolutely love by the way. But I first heard about taxidermy. Taxidermy, if you don't know, it's basically finding um, dead things that used to be living. I'm pretty sure it could only be done with animals. And um, basically you stuff them and you take out the organs and everything so you can preserve it for a long time. You take out everything and it's an art of preserving things so that they still look like the original live version. I think that would be my best explanation of it. So he is stuffing this seabird. A, uh, a dead seabird. But it's like the real outside everything. The beak, the eyes, the tails, everything is real. The skin, the feathers. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was, that was used to mount it. Most likely on a wall. Something about it makes you feel bitter. What happened to the bird? Look, Look. Your buddy is over there. He looks at the doors, where a man in a bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. You and talk to him, okay? I'm definitely not saying number two. What do you mean, my buddy? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Something tells me you don't oh, like me. You're a hero. A real hero, cop. Oh god. Could the massive property damage have anything to Am I? Or did you ride in, take the body down, solve the murder, and not trash my hostel room? We're at a hostel. Take the body down. 
that is the very first case, guys. Take the body down is going to be a big part of what we're doing next. No, you see, actually, you didn't. You haven't done anything even remotely useful since you got here. No, I haven't seen you around. I'm not always here. Oh, he's not always here no, then. No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to piss him off. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Decisions matter, and if I don't need to piss him off, then the store is bolted. It reads, kitchen reserve for personnel until 1300. Okay. I had a thought. It went away. A soft purr of an electric juicer comes from the kitchen. Someone is working. If I right click on it, I can see all the things I can click. I don't want to click on the door yet because my. But I am going to inspect everything else first. A bottle of rum has been knocked over. Beautiful dark liquid is spilling out. Electrochemistry again. That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. It's almost touching. Syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? An hour? Sweet lord, a whole hour. And you haven't thought about rum and lemonade in all that time? You've truly extinguished all trace of yourself. Alright, I'm going to choose the option where I don't try to drink anymore. Actually, should I be thinking about this? Looks like drinking hasn't turned out well for me. Maybe you haven't turned out well for your drinking? Have you thought about that? Get a goddamn rum and lemonade into yourself, boy. Or better yet, lick that stain off the counter. Don't lick it. What happened, man? You used to be cool. Go get your boring, normal person drink then. The electrochemistry inside my noggins, inside my brain, is really messing with me. We have to try to rewire that if we can. It would go well with those cigarettes. It's a great combination. In this game, what I love is you have the absolute option, endless options on choices and choices and choices that you can take. And everything you do does matter. It affects your later decisions. But you can, like, weave yourself into a crazy combo of things. I love that. Ooh, autosave. A man is sleeping at the table, wearing mud-caked boots and rolled-down overalls. The back of his shirt reads, Wild Pines, encircled by a logo with the tree. On the counter, rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. Wake him up. Of the pit. Rolled out of his hand. The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. Item gain magnet. You just picked up medicine. This item is stored in the bottom left corner, bottom left corner. Oh. Of your screen above your character portrait. Click the plus icon to heal your morale if you have morale damage. And we could also try to wake him up. Could we? Right? No failure. You gently shake his shoulder, but nothing happens. This man could probably sleep soundly in a ship's engine room. We're going to talk to everything before we talk to our partner. Our partner is the one standing in the bomber jacket for sure. So we're going to talk to everyone, everything. A sign reads, Mess Hall reserves for union members. Doors open at 1600. This royal pinball machine is unplugged. Talk to this lady. Hello, sweetie. Oh, he's nice to us. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. He nods to the man in the orange bomber jacket. Hello, sweetie. Can we say anything? Your... That's all we could say. Here we go, howdy partner. Kim Kitsuragi. A bee-spectacled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for you. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. Ooh. If an assault were to launch on this building right now if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you you are absolutely sure of this but why take his hand he's extended his hand already hello 
I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. I love the voiceovers. You realize he's waiting for your name. Don't actually know my name, guys. Inland Empire success. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative, conceptualize. Invent a name for yourself. Okay. I think that I should tell him that I don't know my name. Or should we trust this? I guess, trust that. Make up a name? Failure. Raphael Ambrosio's Costio? Oh my god. Yes, well. It looks like we had a little skidding error. She just Saturday didn't two, care. Actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? He is the manager. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? This is where it begins, guys. It also wouldn't hurt the first to case. him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Okay, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body? On the tree so the body is still in the tree this is the first time you detect awareness in the lieutenant's voice it is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in Where the tree it has been hanging for seven days straight we should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner i don't actually remember anything but i'm not sure if i should tell him because I do have in my memory my first gameplay, and that's why I'm going to say let's get going after you off. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? Wait, shouldn't I have a badge or something? You mean you don't have a badge? Pretend you found- no, I should say it wasn't on me, I just don't have- Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a short wave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should take precedent. Lieutenant Kipsaragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by clicking on it. Oh, that's great. I want to talk to him again now. Figure out more about ourselves. Yes. Tell me about the case. What do you want to know? Literally anything about it. Would you say this is a mysterious case? Lieutenant considers your question a moment. Before answering, no, it's not a particularly mysterious case. Why not? The lieutenant shrugs. The deceased is a security guard for a corporation involved in a labor dispute. It doesn't take a DeLorean polymath to put the pieces together. I just don't see the case getting more mysterious than that. What answer shall we choose? I don't like any of the other answers. Then you're in luck because we're in the midst of a major strike by the dock workers union. Maybe more than that. The union clearly wants a piece, not just of the industrial harbor, but the Wild Pines Corporation itself. Is this strike then? Is this a strike then or the first shots in a worker's coop? I expect the case itself to be a little less challenging than navigating these community matters. The district isn't used to the RCM's presence, and the union rarely overplays its hand, as it appears to have done in this case. Wait, so is this a strike or an attempted or an attempted coup? Strike, coup, revolution, it's rigid and whatever, however you parse it. You feel something rising through you, a familiar feeling, an opinion taking form. Oh. Let's see. I don't want to grind the owners or the workers, 
I don't think grounding either side, I guess. When I have said we have to navigate community matters, I did not mean we have any say in them. I meant we should be careful. If we are not, the shit will blow right in our faces. He makes a quick gesture towards his visage where the shit won't blow. From an imaginary fan. Now, was there anything else you wanted to know about the case? Should I tell him that I don't remember anything? Literally anything. Maybe you can tell me what you do know to help me narrow it down a bit. I literally know nothing about it. You want me to brief you? Brief yes. Three days ago, the RCM emergency desk received a report about a security guard who was found hanged in Martinez. Martinez is the name of this town. An anonymous caller said there was a dead body behind the whirling and rags hostel, the one we're staying at, cafeteria. The cadaver had been there for four days. No one had come to investigate. During that time, the victim had been stripped of his belongings. The caller did not identify him, but used the word lynching. There is an ongoing labor dispute between the local dock workers and the logistics company Wild Pines. I was told we should approach the death as part of this dispute. Does the briefing say who the victim was? A security guard or worker of some sort hired by Wild Pines. This was just hearsay from Martinez, of course. We need to find out the truth. Who was the caller then? To find him or her is one of our tasks here. For now, all we know is that the tone was muffled. Using a device of some sort, the desk could identify whether the caller's age nor sex. Why hide themselves? There's a strong prejudice against involving the RCM in what's seen as union matters. RCM is basically the police force here. It's called the RCM. The dock workers union is the de facto police in Martinez. I don't know what de facto. Now it appears they've started executing too. We cannot allow that. Hold on, the RCM is. That's us. The Revitrol Citizens Militia. We're the police in this. Let me just make this perfectly clear. Our job here is to find the killer. Ask him to tell you. Secret task complete. Ask him to tell you about the case. Right. Alright. If we're from different precincts, why are we on the same case? Then? I'm afraid you and I are pawns in A. He considers the phrase a pissing competition. His disdain is clear. The man would not use such an ex otherwise. I do like my partner. I feel like he's very... He's doing... I feel like he would do a good job at his job. Good job at his job. You don't know. His eyes narrow. I assumed you were in on it. Oh, I don't remember being in on anything. That's good. Tell me about it. It's just stupidity. Pass gain. The pissing competition. What? We shouldn't waste any more time on it. If you want my ta my take, ask me about it after we've inspected the victim. Okay, let it go then. Was there anything else you wanted to know about the case? I let it go because there was a choice to keep asking him about it or not. But I feel like we should do our work first as detective. We'll have all the info I need. Um, I want to be talking about you. Me? Yes, you. I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. We'll work better if we have more report. Hmm, that's a fair point. Alright, for the good of the investigation, what do you want to know? Tell me about yourself. The Kitsuragi narrows an eyebrow. No. Ask again. Your brain sends the signal to your lips, but they refuse the order. Something is paralyzing them. You're sure it has something to do with the lieutenant's eyebrow. There you go. The eyebrow is exercising... Psionic control over you. What's happening to you? Something the matter, detective? This guy's got authority off the charts. With just a flick of his eyebrow, he's able to make you his thrall. What can I do about it? Nothing. You better hope he doesn't abuse his authority. There's a lot of it. I'll sub your thraldom. I guess secret is too early to ask. I don't look like the other people around here. That's because I'm half seal light. Or quarter. My father was from Seoul. Is that- are they trying to be like Seoul? It's Aragi is usually a Japanese last name. Seoul is Seoul Korea. But that's spelled differently. Seoul was my grandmother. But from my mother's side, it's not an interesting topic. It's a part of the world, officer. A geopolitic 
political entity and a geographic division. I told you it wouldn't be interesting. You're only making it sound uninteresting. I still want to know more about Seoul. You're barking up the wrong tree. I don't speak a word of Seoul light. I've never met any one of my grandparents and I've never been to Seoul. He seems almost proud of these things. I'm a regular revacholery. He seems to have... He seems glad to have shot down your question. You were in glass. That's correct. I'm just asking. Physical instrument failure. You feel a slight urge to put the lieutenant down with this, but you can't muster enough testosterone. Do you ever talk with you? You know, when you're thinking, do you ever- I'm trying to go through all the things with him. I have no idea what you're talking about. The lieutenant's conceptualization skills must be rather rudimentary. The lieutenant is a police officer of the old school. His concerns are material and extrinsic. But this isn't an old school case. But how do you, you know, tap the side of your head? Are you saying your brain never just chimes in with advice or warnings or anything? Can't say that it does, no. When I need to think, I just use my notebook. The lieutenant produces a small blue notebook and idly thumbs through a few pages. That's where his conversations with himself takes place. Oh, exactly. On his notebook. We all have different mediums. His is written. Okay, I think that's enough. I've talked to him a lot. You seem to be following me. Excuse me. Nothing, just an observation. You have a, he's looking for the right words, a distinctive way of walking. If I were to walk in front of you, we would surely claw. What do you mean distinctive? I hope you don't take this the wrong way. It's just a collegial observation. In the 57th, we call it the Jam Rock Shuffle. Officers from Jam Rock's 41st precinct tend to move a bit erratically. How's that? They say it's a scene clearing technique developed by one of your lieutenants for gathering evidence. It's erratic yet thorough. Prioritizes containers. Containers? Are you kidding me? Why contain? I don't know. Containers. Contain, I guess. I'm making assumptions. We should move on. Passing along frivolous interdepartmental stereotypes is not usually his. He regrets bringing it up. Oh no, that's not good. I don't want to make him feel bad. Should we tell him that we don't remember anything? No response. He just arches his eyebrow. I really don't remember anything. There was drinking involved. Have you tried concentrating on something other than your personal affairs? There's a sudden harsh edge to his voice. Like he's tired of hearing about your personal affairs. It might be a medical situation though, like usually you get drunk, right? But to the point of amnesia? I mean, I do think his personal affairs are interfering with his work. I know what I should be concentrating on, the work, but I'm completely lacking in basic information about even this organization we're working in. Can you help me? Really? The lieutenant gives you a look, thorough as if performing triag. You look fine to me. I'm talking serious, unbelievable damage here. I saw myself in the mirror and had no idea who I was. This psychodrama is unbecoming of an officer. It's not psychological. Some sort of major brain damage has occurred on an unprecedented scale. Oh, call your stations, Lazarus. Then you should consider seeking medical attention. You should use the radio in my Kamima. To call your stations Lazarus. Was there anything else you need? Good. Maybe we can get some help on our condition. I don't know if being that drunk can cause amnesia though. The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops a ledger he was holding and turns to Lieutenant. Mr. Garth, right? You run this place. Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. This is an inter-district investigation, so joining me from Prison 41? Definitely not have a drink, not the Harbinger of Ruin. Currently in between names is the worst, say nothing. Right. Now, 
I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report the dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? Was it? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Oh. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. He looks behind a pile of coasters, finds a slip of paper, and hands it you to the lieutenant. Got here. From where? Are you a local? What? From Martinez? No. I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. This guy sounds like he's posting or bragging. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are. But as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. Don't really find him suspicious, but... I didn't imply that. Detective? It's your turn. He takes a respectful little step back at your turn. Yes, yes. He means, do you have questions for me? Like a police officer would. The cafeteria manager is clearly agitated again. Where exactly is the body? Behind this building, there's a courtyard. He points to the kitchen behind him. They hoisted him up on a tree there. How do we get there then? That's easy. See that door there? He points to the west. First you exit through that. To the west. First you exit through that. Then to your right you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the cavalry. Frangor cavalry to fit through. Does he want you to feel guilty of making that? It's implied in his vote. Whoa. Did we do that? In the fence? Why did Sylvie go? She went away because none of your bits. Extra fine. Who killed him? I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. I have another question. Yes, that's all. Interview cafeteria manager. I don't think I should just ask him, like, did you kill him? That's gonna be bad. Not so fast. He points to you. You owe me 130 real. No one is saying the multi-pattern necktie you found tied to the ceiling fan can talk. No one. It must be purely imagination, but what's happening with the tie? Let's bail. Time to push the eject button. Sounds like a responsibility. You don't like the... I don't think we can slip away. Should we try to slip away? Okay, we owe him money. The IIR or is the global reserve currency. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe him some money. Wow, you're a genius. Yes, that's right. Money. You owe this establishment that much. The thing is, I could have slipped away, but I didn't want to do that. If we owe people money, we should return is what I think. Especially if we're... Officer. Who does that clown think you? Let's see. Three nights at a tariff of 20 real comes 60. Then there's window, the hole in the wall. And don't try to tell me. 40 real. Oh my god. Another thing you've annihilated is half the bar, a tab of 30, actually more, but we'll run it down to 30 for hard work maintaining stability of the city. And yes, real is still money. What are you, a philosopher? Since I woke up, I have trouble remembering even the most basic concepts of reality. I'm just getting my bearings. Money is what grown-up people use to pay for things. I can't believe he has to explain to us what money is. Things like this hostel room or eight bottles of potent blend. Or maybe he's kind of explaining the game because we need money in this game. We use it for everything, really. Yes, it is. We should try to pay him back. 
a little bit at a time. Oh no, that's 40 cents. Cents are a form of currency 100 times. I'm not even going to take this. Come back when you have 100 real. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to piss him off. If we owe him money, we're just going to pay it back. Isn't it evil? The order of magnitude between what is asked of a person and what they have. Darkness ride. Should we say anything? It does, doesn't it? Ooh, it looks like we scored a point with him. There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitaragi looks for something in the pockets of an orange bomber. That's cop for I haven't offered to pay because I don't have money either. What happens now? He turns to the lieutenant. I'm sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then he shrugs. Officer, maybe you're better off working this from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? Remember where my home is, the officer. A pattern of creases appears on his forehead, like heavy wrinkles. You really need to take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car. Call them, ask for assistance. We have to get this investigation started now. The man wants to say something, then thinks better of it. Good luck. I'm glad we didn't piss him off too much. By the way, where is home? The address is coming out blank, and this place sure isn't it. I really don't remember. We have been in this hostile cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? Where were we before? We had to be somewhere. And it begin. Far away? In time or space? Both. That doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. Can I trace it back somehow? Thought gain. Lonesome long way home. You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. All right, and now let's go. He told us to move west. Wonder if we can like go faster. Oh yeah, shift. Actually, can I speak to the lady now before I go out? Because I already gathered my officer. Hello again, sweetie. I see you met up with your colleague. You are a handsome man, officer, with your moustache and your chiseled jaw. And He's so kind to me. Your chin. But dear, you're not for me. I'm too old and too married besides. You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained, I completely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street. But I come here for tea when they're away. Her eyes glitter over the rims of her glasses as she looks up, smiling. She's the nicest lady to us so far. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley crew. Hire her on the spot. I don't know if I should tell her, I guess. Her eyes follow your movements with some concern. Yes, officer, you look rather dazed, like a stunned fox, but surely things can't be that bad. I hope you're right. I hope it's not too bad. You know where we are, right? The Whirling Rings Cafeteria. Whirling Rags. Ooh! The most beautiful city in the world. We're fortunate to be here. Revachol. I haven't seen many other cities personally, but everyone says so. Revachol is a rare jewel. But there is a murder case. The city used to rule the world, though it has seen better days. There's a pause as she studies your expression. You must look quite lost. Speaking of history, you know what a year it is, right? Ring 51. That's right, dear. Kind green ape pen. How splendid. Here, take this pen. Knowledge should always be rewarded. Her relief is palpable. She was getting pretty worried about you there, but now she relaxes your shoulders. I can tell this is taxing for you, so I can ask one more question. What regime are we living in? E. That 
definitely not a democracy, huh? Virtual is called Zone of Control, under an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have no government of our own, and what democracy we have is market-driven. That sounds very corrupt. There's no government, how come there are cops? Oh dear, she shakes her head, suddenly very worried. And you are doing so well. There aren't any cops in Revachol. Not in the traditional sense. The status of law enforcement, who am I, has been a complicated matter since the revolution. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to any- She's scared now. She realized that you really are brain dim. A defeat, I'm afraid. The people of this archipelago tried to build something new. Something different. The rest of the world didn't like it, so they came and ended it. This was 40 years ago. New task. We have many tasks already. Of course, she turns to you. Then I don't know. Someone rich, maybe. Wealthy people are educated. Though I don't know where we find a wealthy person in Martin. Huh. I thought I should really extensively talk to people and get to become friends if possible. Okay, how do we exit up? Let's see. What is this door, I believe? There we go. Something to do behind Lieutenant Kitsuragi's back, sneak out after he's gone to sleep. There we go. Alright. There is a lady sitting here. Heap of snow. I couldn't talk to her from up here before. Pigs go home. The street name is ineligible. Usually by pigs, people usually are talking about cops. That's like a common way um, to talk terribly about cops. So maybe policemen in this town are looked down upon. There's this lady. She's barefoot. The street sign says... Ooh. Talk to her. The young woman looks at her. We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. Of course, what can I help you with? Ooh, she looks uncomfortable. gloves you get the feeling that you need them you have a dead body to deal with after all i th i mean i guess he hands you the rubber gloves with no visible annoyance that's good auto saved gloves on And now we are heading to the body. We're going to ignore those two points and we are just going in here. To where the body is. And there it is. But before we go further, that is actually it for this very first gameplay. I really adore this game. It is definitely one of the best RPGs and this is only the beginning. Usually how games have like a very 
a short or like a one hour long, anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour long prologue before the game begins, I consider that point to be the prologue. That was all just the beginning and it only gets better and better and the story has so many options and every decision matters. I absolutely adore it. I hope you guys did enjoy this gameplay too. There is just so much to do here, like so much to see and we just reached the body and we have no idea who we even are. But that is all for episode number two. If you guys enjoyed this gameplay, please let me know by giving me a big thumbs up. I would really appreciate it and it definitely helps the channel out. And if you guys did enjoy this gameplay, please let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of the game. Like, did you guys play this game before? Is this your type of game? And would you guys play this game? Also, if you want to see more gameplay, definitely let me know in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would absolutely love it if you guys did subscribe. Subscribing gets you guys notified of when I post next. You guys will get notified at the soon as possible way if you are subscribed. As always, I always appreciate those of you who watch, leave comments, and like the videos. It means so much to me. Thank you guys. I hope you're all staying safe, having a lovely day, happy gaming as always, and I'll see you guys again really soon.